Hi there, and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah, and thank you for joining me for this look at my tarot collection for 2023, specifically all the new oracles and uh, divination tools that I received this year. Um, now, this is a video I knew I wanted to make in some kind of a format, and at first I thought I would just go through a list of everything that I uh, received and retained this year. Um, but I was kind of hoping I could I could mix it with something else to make it a little bit more interesting. And the opportunity to do that just appeared to me in the form of a tarot tag. So this tag is from um, someone that I'm actually not familiar with. I'll have to go back and watch uh, their video later. Um, but it's the end of year tarot tag by Spirited Stardust. I found out about this from Laura of uh, Laura of Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books. Uh, Laura had just posted her video response to this tag, and I thought, aha, these are the prompts that kind of fit with the decks that I have, and I can I can sort of tie this all together um, and maybe just jazz it up a little bit from a plain old list. Before I get uh, too far ahead of myself, I do want to mention um, one thing that's not a tarot deck that I received this year that I really have enjoyed so much. And so thanks to my family, again, for getting me the Magic 8 Ball Oracle. Um, if you're not familiar with this, it, it was originally invented in 1946 by Albert C. Carter and Abe Bookman. Um, it is currently produced and marketed by the toy company Mattel. Um, but uh, for me, it's it's really been the most accurate yes/no uh, answers oracle that I've ever worked with, and I and greatly enjoy consulting the Magic Eight Ball on yes/no questions. So, and I did some live uh, videos this year where I had other people ask questions, and you know it seems to be fairly accurate. So um, that's been a fun one to work with. All right, so uh, back to the decks, and I will also say that. Um, in some categories, I have more than one uh, answer. Um, I have 14 new decks to my collection that I've kept um, this year. I haven't retained everything that I, I have uh, tried or that's been gifted to me, but uh, of those, uh, I've kept 14. And um, so the, the, there are fewer prompts than that, so I have to use a couple of titles for a couple of the prompts. Um, but I feel okay about that. So let's take a look at these questions. All right, so the first prompt is the um, tarot used the most, and that would be the Tarot de Carlo Tides by Carlotta Santos. Um, this is produced by Fournier, and Carlotta Santos is a Spanish artist. Um, and I got this fairly early in the year. I don't know how quite how early, but I would say in the, in the first quarter, perhaps. And... What can I say about this deck? I've, I've talked about it before. I love the openness of the imagery. I love the alternate uh, images and the mix of cultures. So you have some, um, you know, Russian or uh, Polish culture here. You have Celtic culture. You have uh, different kinds of things represented. And I, I love the creativity here. I like the um, sort of unconventional artwork that this shows and also just the beautiful scenes um, with lots of little tiny details that you may not uh, you may not even notice the first 10 times you look at a particular card but then it's one of those that that really rewards repeat viewing and repeat reflection because suddenly you're you're wondering oh well, what's what's that herb in that in that little jar there or um, you know wow look at all the all the different things that are in this person's costume um, yeah, it's, it's great. And it's a great reader. Even though it's unconventional, it gives, I think, very clear readings. And I've done some example readings with this on the channel. So Tarot de Carlo Tides, I've read with it for myself. Uh, it's very clear and concise and, and can be a bit cutting. Um, and uh, I've also read for friends very successfully. Okay, the next prompt is the deck you did not use at all. And some of you um, who watched my lives and saw how excited I was about the Blood Moon Tarot uh, might be surprised that, that this falls into this category. I wouldn't say I haven't used it, I just haven't used it for a reading. And I think it's because I'm finding this, this deck a little bit intimidating. Um, the artwork is very intense for me. It's, um, it's very dreamlike, it's, it's just got a lot of emotion. I, I feel stirred up when I look at these images. So I think it will be very good to read with when I 
um, feel like I'm ready to do that, but I just haven't felt um, like I had, I don't know, an appropriate question or really wanted to um, expose any of my friends uh, to this deck without me feeling maybe a little bit more um, comfortable with it. You know, it's it's kind of a discomforting deck, and and that's actually one of the reasons I wanted to get it. It wasn't it wasn't just because I liked it or thought it was pretty or something. I I like the way that it stirs me up. I love this Temperance card. It's probably my favorite Temperance card I've ever seen. So yeah, it's it's a heavy hitter, I think, uh, and you know, yet it can be sweet and gentle. You know, there are there are a mix of different kinds of um, cards and imagery here. I really, I have a great respect for this deck, and sometimes when I when I revere something a little bit too much, I tend to sort of put it on a pedestal or or you know start treating it as an artifact and not a tool. So that that's a danger, I suppose, for myself. But you know, I do look forward to to using this at some point. Um, this was a very generous trade from someone that I know from online, uh, Olive Slings Cards, and um, she's on Instagram and does great readings. And she just wasn't using this, and I had another um, deck that she was interested in, and she was kind enough to offer a trade. So, so don't worry, I will definitely be using this deck. I just um, I haven't done so yet. And then another deck that I got this year that I haven't really used for a reading, um, because I tend not to, um, is this version of the Tarot Visconti Sforza. This is an out of print um, printing, this particular edition, originally made by Editions Fabri in conjunction with Los Carabeo. Um, Los Carabeo has been involved in many productions of this type of historic deck, um, but I got this one in particular because um, of the the tower and the devil cards not being um or being more perhaps historically medieval historically accurate in the type of imagery and representation that they have um, there's your devil card so this devil um, in this deck uh, is a redrawing because the visconti sforza itself we so we don't have a, a historic devil card from from that deck and so we don't know exactly what it would have looked like this is a better guess based on the time period and the art style than what some of the more modern uh, reproductions of this deck have as a substitute devil card where they have a more Marseille uh, style type of devil with a you know a, a creature on a pedestal with two imps uh, next to them and the tower is the same way so instead of a Marseille style tower with that sort of long phallic uh, tower going up in the middle and the roof being blown off. This is just a large building that's on fire um, and so it's a little bit more simplified and it's a little bit more again um, in line with something like the Taroki Rosenwald which just shows a, a building that's on fire. So I'm, I'm happy to have this for its you know potential to be more historically accurate uh, and the rich colors. I like, I like the production quality on this deck very much and it's a great one to have as a reference point in my collection. So I have used it, but just not for readings. Next up, we have our most recent edition is the prompt. And I actually received three decks for the holidays time, and this was one of them. So um, I'm going to talk about the other two in different contexts. I did receive the Santa Muerte Tarot from the uh, from from my mother. Um, this is a Los Carabeo version, and it's a mini version. And I had wanted, I didn't really have any mini decks that were fully scenic. So I have a, a number of small, you know, pocket travel size mini decks that are pip decks or Marseille decks, but I didn't have any one that were fully scenic. And I had been having this, this was on my wish list for a couple of years on and off. And then Mixtress Ray actually was mentioning this deck um, in one of her videos on sort of decks that work because they have great systems, they have a great logic, internal logic to them. And it gave me a renewed appreciation of this this deck like for example the empress and emperor you can see are in uh the same scene you know her dress even comes spills over from her scene into his scene and so i i just like the touches of of thoughtfulness and you know logic and thinking through that are presented here um, I also love things like this, like this tower card. It looks like an M.C. Escher painting with um, the the warped perspective where you kind of can't tell what's up and down and left and right. Um, there's all kinds of really beautiful imagery here. I do uh, also appreciate 
Um, there's uh, a certain repetition in symbolism and a certain thoughtfulism in symbolism. Um, for example, across the tens of each of the, the pip suits, um, they all represent a, a butterfly or a moth with a part of the body. And it's very thoughtfully done. You know, those those kinds of choices are very thoughtfully done. So, um, yeah, I look, I look forward to working more with this deck. It's bright, it's colorful, uh, and it's full of skeletons. What's not to love? Um, I think this is going to be a, a wonderful one to use, um, you know, probably starting in the spring. It's, it's a very lively deck and it, and it's kind of screams, uh, springtime to me. So I'll be using that soon. Next prompt is a deck you rehomed or put in purgatory. I'll mention two. There were a few that, um, kind of came in either that I bought or that I received as gifts that, that didn't quite, uh, click with me, but I've been glad to you know, try them out and use them. Um, so the first is the Diverse Terra de Marseille. Um, I really liked the Diverse Terra de Marseille and I did a, an extensive walkthrough of it on the channel, which you can find. Um, but then I caught wind of another deck that is sort of in the same vein and I liked it better. So I passed the Diverse uh, TDM on to a friend of mine. And then the other one was the Tarot of the Cat People. Um, and this one was kind of a you know, everyone's talking about this deck. It's based on this interesting sci-fi um, anthropological study of the cat people or the cat peoples that live on this fictional planet and, you know, their their culture and their religion and, and, and all this stuff. And the artwork is very beautiful, um, but the deck reads very cold to me. It's a lot of portraits, a lot of people staring directly at you uh, when you lay out the cards. And so that one is is now in purgatory. I have both a vintage copy of the deck and the full booklet that came with it and did a buddy read uh, with some other folks um, through the booklet. And that was a great exercise, but I'm not sure this is going to be staying in my collection. I'm not really sure what to do with my copy of the deck because I like the artwork, but the, the deck doesn't really read that well for me. So um, that's that prompt. The next prompt is favorite pairing. And... This might be a surprise to you. It was certainly a surprise to me. Um, but my favorite pairing this year has been, uh, of decks that I've received this year, has been the Margarita Peterson Tarot with the Oracle Medieval et Merveilleux. And I'll just show you some, some cards while I talk about this. So I don't really know what prompted me to try these two together, um, but it just seemed, I just seemed to be in the mood to do that earlier this year. And I really enjoyed it. I actually had uh, two tarot cards with one of these oracle cards in the middle um, is what I ended up drawing. But I, I love the way that these two color palettes um, both go together, as in, say, these two cards uh, really work together with these warm tones and also contrast. Oh, and thank you, Dex, because, um, you know, here you have a lot of blue and cool colors and, and that. But I think that there's something about the negative space in these two sets of artwork, the um, overall forms and shapes, the level of detail um, that just kind of work together in a very interesting way and really stimulate my imagination um, in a way that I probably wouldn't have thought of or, or you know, that's that's kind of the point, right, is like, Part of tarot reading for me is to really stir yourself up. You know, it, you can think about a question or problem uh, that you're going through and you can kind of try to logic your way through it or you can concentrate on your emotions and you can think about, okay, well, how does this situation make me feel? Um, and sort of puzzle your way through it like that. And sometimes you can come up with, you know, your own solutions without having a tarot reading. So then the question is, well, what is, what is doing a reading do for you? What is it? What does it help you with that you can't do as effectively on your own? And for me, it's just kind of this stirring up. It's it's kind of like taking your little snow globe of your thoughts and emotions and giving it a good shake, and then seeing how everything settles out and going, oh, I didn't, I didn't see that, or I didn't think of that, or you know, now I feel this way about it. So I I love this actually yeah, these these two uh, cards came up in the the reading that I did for myself so I um, I'm gonna continue with this pairing I think it's it's wonderful especially for uh, reading on subjects that are sort of emotional um, in nature you know how am I feeling about this or why am I feeling this way perhaps um, might be might be interesting questions to ask of these two together so um, that's my surprise pairing 
I also want to mention that these were both uh, lovely gifts. Um, Laura of Aquamarine 19 gave me the Margarita Peterson when we met up in person in Montreal earlier this year. Um, we did a sort of accidental trade. Um, I had brought a deck for her to look at and um, if she, if she liked it, I was going to give it to her anyway. And then I had asked her um, specifically, we, we said, okay, well, you know, are there any decks in my collection or your collection that you'd like to see in person that you haven't seen before? And this was one. I had been thinking about it for a long time. And um, I started looking through it and telling her how much I admired it. And she said, well, just keep it because, you know, you like the artwork and you appreciate it. So, so thank you to Laura. And then this one was a, a lovely, um, again, sort of a gift trade to Sorsha. I had sent her um, a deck that I bought for her. And she asked me if there was anything on my wish list. And um, this deck is made in France and it's a little tricky to get in the U.S., um, with, with international shipping and all that. So she actually shipped it to a friend of mine in England. And then when we were there in person, um, I was able to pick it up. So that worked out really well. So thank you again, friends, for the lovely gifts. It's very much appreciated. The next prompt is favorite mod or modification. Um, and I think you can also show something like a bag or something else that you made uh, for yourself. Um, my favorite mod this year, and I don't do a lot of modification, I, I did a uh, toy with the idea for a minute and I did uh, cut up one deck and I've edged a couple, but I've backed away from modding in general. But a, a useful and helpful mod that I did um, is to the Star Seeker Tarot. So this, this deck is not necessarily new to my collection, but it returned to my collection after being absent because I really missed the artwork, um, but I really hate the cardstock. And so I had, I'd had this fit of, of peak and gotten rid of all my copies of this, um, out of frustration with the cardstock. And then a friend of mine clued me in and said, well, have you tried Benabel Wen's technique for powdering cards? And so I said no, and I managed to trade this um, this copy back from someone uh, through an online group, and um, was able to to do the card powdering process. And now it shuffles really well. I'll do a demonstration for you. So obviously, powdering cards doesn't do anything about card stiffness or the overall thickness of the deck, which are still a problem a bit, but it does help a lot with slide, and so it helps tremendously. And I simply could not shuffle this deck um, before. So, um, so thank you to my friend, thank you to Benabel Wen for your great tips. And now I can use this deck, and it is so pretty. Um, it's so beautiful. It is thoughtful. It gets away from some of the really tight um, and you know constricting images of the uh, Rider Waite Smith deck, and opens up a lot of those to be to be more easily interpreted in various contexts. And I always appreciate that when artists can do that. You know, those are my favorite decks is, is ones where the images are a little bit more open to interpretation and everything can kind of look positive, negative, or neutral um, depending on the context. So um, I'm very glad to have this back in my collection and actually be able to use it um, a lot more easily. So the next prompt um, reads, what deck do you want for Christmas? Um, I'm interpreting this as any sort of gift, uh, seasonal gift. And um, like I said, there were three three decks that I got at the end of the year, um, so I'll show another one here. Uh, this is the Terro Neocolonial de las Americas um, by Patrick McGrath Munez, and this is produced by U.S. Games. I found out about it on Tom Benjamin's channel, so thank you to Tom Benjamin. And it's an interesting uh, an interesting one. It's unusual, and it's probably a little more political and hard-hitting than what I would normally pick, but I'm kind of trying to challenge myself in that way, and so that's why I picked it. It does come with the book, and I would say the book is really necessary because it explains the imagery in the cards, and the imagery is based on historic and political events. So, um, and I don't know a lot of these, so you know, I can't tell you off the top of my head who these people are, but they all relate to uh, the invasion, the colonial invasion of um, North and South America. And the players there, um, both the uh, people from the native uh, groups that were, you know, trading and, and trying to um, make treaties and, and deal with these invaders. And then of course, all of the, the royals back in, in Europe that were ordering ships to come across and and take over. Um, and then it kind of comes up through the ages. So it's not just uh, ancient history um, or colonial history, but you know, modern history. 
Um, and here we have the invention of the, the, the mass production of the car, for example, and what that's done to our civilization and the environment. Um, so, so topics like that. So I appreciate this deck for its, um, you know, its, its lack of, of holding back, um, its truthfulness as it speaks, and uh, for the opportunity to learn more about our history, our shared history through, uh, through this artist. Um, for me, this deck kind of fits in my collection, maybe the way something like the Next World Tarot would fit in for other people. Um, I just never liked that artwork. I could I could never get over my almost repulsion. I, I hate to say such harsh words, but it's just my my reaction to those visuals. I didn't like the artwork and I never wanted that deck, but I wanted something like that in my collection. I feel like it's my duty to to, you know, um, tap into you know what we're what we're doing as a human species right now, um, and so I think this for me this is the deck that's going to present that opportunity. Um, will it read well? Um, you know that's an interesting question. I'm certainly going to try to read with it. And Tom Benjamin kind of wrestles with that in his review too. If I think about it, I'll link to his his kind of walkthrough and some of his thoughts about you know how do you how do you read how do you answer a question about yourself with a deck that talks about the collective experience um, in this way, you know, in this very specific way. Um, that's an interesting question to think about. So, uh, but I'm very glad, I'm very grateful to my family for getting this for me and uh, and giving me this opportunity to work with this. And I, I do love the artwork. It's this, it almost looks like it's colored pencil. I'm not sure exactly of the medium, um, you know, maybe pen and ink with some colored pencil. So. Yeah, it's interesting, and I can recognize a lot of the faces from, you know, history textbooks and things. I know that I know a lot of these people and or figures, you know, here's Statue of Liberty, for example. It will just be interesting to kind of review and refresh my memory. Um, I love this Nine of Cups. This is great. This is great. Yeah. So um, anyway, that is the Terra Neo Colonial de las Americas, and it is um, produced by U.S. Games. All right, our next prompt is what deck would you gift to others? And um, I'm going to have two answers for this, just because, again, I have more decks than prompts. Um, and these are two that are, are cute and interesting and sort of fun and, and funny in two different ways. So I thought they would both make uh, good gifts for, you know, maybe for different people, depending on who the people are. So this is the Astrea Tarot. And it is by an artist uh, who styles herself Ash La Astrea. Um, she has a YouTube channel as well. And this is a modern uh, Marseille style. These are both modern Marseille style decks. And this one features uh, pop culture figures and really beautiful um, pips with, you know, sort of um, just this vibrant color palette. I love it. Um, very clear imagery. You know, this is all original artwork. It is based in the Marseille tradition, but she's included plants from a more tropical or Caribbean um, places and the cowrie shells replace the coins so an item that would have been used for trade um, still but uh, but you know from a different culture um, and and it's it's just it's lovely I, I really like um, her approach to this uh, the sense of humor here and then like I said each of these are uh, pop culture figures, um, each of the single figures. So like this is Michael Jackson. Um, and again, I don't know all of them, um, but there's Tupac Shakur. Um, and she does have an online uh, thing, uh, booklet of sorts, where you can look up um, who they all are, Amy Winehouse. So I think her choices are, are fairly apropos of the, of the figures that I know. Um, her choices are quite good. And, uh, and like I said, I just, I like the playfulness, I like the colors, and, and her choices for a modern, a modern deck. And I think this could really speak well to people, um, you know, in a public reading kind of situation, because they might recognize some of the faces too. So um, I think for that reason, it could be a good gift. And then the other deck I thought might be a fun gift. Um, this one's new to me this year, but it was published in first in 2018. And this is the Dinosaur de Marseille. Um, now, as I explained, this isn't really a Marseille deck. It's actually more close to the anonymous tarot of Paris in the way that it presents um, the images on the pip cards. And then it also has extra cards um, like a Minchiati would. 
So um, it's really this kind of interesting mashup of uh, older historic decks, dinosaurs, and Minkiati. And I think it's, again, it's really fun. Uh, the colors are nice and vibrant. Uh, and who doesn't love dinosaurs? So that, I think for those reasons, it would, it would be fun. It would even be fun potentially to give to you know, a, a teen or a tween child, um, just to have them play with the pictures. Like, you know, here you can make up stories about dinosaurs. It doesn't have to be about tarot readings necessarily. Um, yeah, and it's done very thoughtfully. You know, the the um, the water suit is based on plants that grow in the ocean and dinosaurs that were swimmers, and the air suit is dinosaurs that fly. Um, so it's not just haphazard. There's a ton of thought behind it. Um, and I gave a lot of readings this summer with this deck because it was the only tarot deck I had access to while we were traveling. I picked it up at a friend's house at the beginning of the trip and, you know, had strategically packed light um, for that trip. And so this was the deck that everyone got to got to read with when uh, when they asked me for a reading. And it reads really well. So um, I think it would be a really fun gift for someone. And speaking of Minkiati, so the next category is deck you fell in love with. And really, I fell in love with a style of tarot this year, and that is the Minkiati. Um, and I now have sort of four decks that, that verge on Minkiati-ishness. But uh, the first two that I had gotten, uh, which were the Heather Hall um, Taroki Rosenwald, where she's added cards that aren't in the original Ro Rosenwald, and then uh, this Dinosaurs de Marseille deck kind of hinted around the Minkiati, but then I got to a point where I just got so interested and I really wanted some actual Minkiati decks. So I got two this year, um, and there are these two. This uh, Minkiati El Signo uh, is from Bologna of 1775, and um, it is produced by Los Garbeo, part of their Anima Antiqua series. And Minkiati decks, if you don't know, they have um, some differences between regular tarot, and I did do an introduction to Minkiati, so I will uh, link that below. But they have a lot of extra cards, and they also, um, they don't have the typical two through five. So um, instead of the two through five, they have four emperors, um, and uh, so that's a, that's a difference. Um, but I I just think this is a really interesting branch of tarot study or or tarot history I think they really work well for reading because of the extra cards you get you get more subtlety and nuance out of this deck because you have the extra you have earth water fire and air as separate cards and you also have all the signs of the zodiac as separate cards um, so it just gives you I don't know more to work with I suppose um, in readings. And I like this older style of artwork. I like both of these for different reasons. They have very different production quality. So um, this is the, the sort of uh, woodblock style that you can see where you would have had a woodblock and then stamped it into paper and then gone over it with a stencil to color in the different uh, portions with, with inks. And then this one is an engraved deck. This is the uh, Minkiati Etruria from uh, produced by Il Minigello. I actually think the date on this should read 1825, not 1725, but um, I can't quite verify that. So uh, anyway, this is this is much more refined. You can see the level of detail on these cards is, is incredible here. Um, and it just has to do with the, the printing technology or the, or the, the way that the plates are uh, created and then used. Um, so this is like the fancy version and this is kind of the common, you know, go down to the the corner store kind of version. Um, so I like having both of these in my collection for different reasons. And again, uh, just appreciate the vibrant colors, the way this has been restored. And um, yeah, I, I think the Minkiati is so cool. And I will say that Marilyn of Tar Tarot Clarity has some interesting theories uh, about the Minkiati and, and the imagery that comes out of um, out of that and into the Marseille uh, in later decks. So, um, for example, this would be the star card, right? And you have a man on a horse carrying a, a gift or a goblet um, versus a naked woman by a pool. So how did, you know, how exactly did that all come about? Um, she has some interesting theories. So I'll link to her channel as well, and you can um, 
search on her. She has several videos uh, discussing them in Kiati. So. All right, our penultimate prompt is which card sums up this year as a whole? And I don't know that I have a specific card to sum up the year as a whole, but I did have two decks I wanted to talk about that kind of sum up the year as a whole. And the first is this one. This is the Dreams of Pentagoral Oracle. It is, uh, I want to say, collated or edited um, by Sorsha over at the Sorsha Soaring Craft channel. Um, it is based on an older work um, called The Drolytic Dreams of Pantagruel. And Sorsha has a video, also an extensive blog post about the history of this deck, so I won't go into it there. But these are, you know, different creatures, um, and you can use this deck as an oracle, as you might use, you know, any uh, any oracle deck. Um, I like that they're just pictures. They don't have a title, but they have a room here that sort of invites you to think of a title uh, when you when you draw a card or cards. Um, I think if I were going to have a card of the day practice, um, and I've thought about doing this for at least a month this coming year, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tickled at the idea of using this as a card of a day. So I'm just drawing a single card and getting a single, you know, someone um, to give you a message. And what would that message be? Well, who knows? But um, I love these. I love the comedic factor here uh, and the the very droll and, and, and ridiculous sense of humor in these cards. And I love the production quality. You can see that Sorsha has uh, allowed the original source material. The scans um, have different colored backgrounds slightly, and, and she's kept that here. And I think it really adds a richness and suppleness to this deck so that when you lay out multiple cards, your, your eye is... Uh, sees some more variety um, on the on the table there, and um, I I think if you look at the details, if you do ask a question and you look at the details, you'll actually get a really surprising answer. Um, at least that's that's what I've found in using this deck this year. So, um, and why does this sum up the year? Well, it's been it's been a quirky and unexpected year for me personally. Um, lots of surprises and a lot of things that sort of looked scary at first, maybe like this guy, but then ended up just being sort of funny or silly or um, even helpful uh, in the end. So um, so that was fun. We also went on a lot of adventures, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And and you know, anytime you're, you're trying something new, there's always this, oh, how's it going to go? You know, is it going to be fun? Is it going to be fraught? We don't know. Maybe it'll be a mix of both. Um, and so that was really cool too. So I, th I think this this deck as an overall mood for 2023 for me personally um, certainly sums up sums things up that way. And then the other deck that really sums up my year, um, because I mentioned this um, hiking trip that my partner and I took in England, and we went for um, about six days. We were hiking in the Cotswolds in England, and we did a multi-day hike for the first time. We'd never done anything like this before. And um, so this deck, which is the uh, Tarot for the Great Outdoors, and again, I just received this as a holiday gift. It's um, by J.Q. Gordon, with illustrations by Charisse Steber. Um, it's very beautiful, and it features, of course, uh, people doing things in the great outdoors. Um, I love, again, the open um, interpretation of the cards. Nothing's really locked in, and you can read into these, uh, these cards a lot of different meanings, depending on the situation. The colors are beautiful and, and vibrant without being overly saturated. Um, there's a lot of joy and tenderness and reverence for nature here. And I've um, just done a couple of readings for friends uh, with the card of the year readings, and they both really responded deeply to this deck. She's a park, park ranger, um, and they both like to go hiking a lot. We've done some local hikes with them. So I'm not surprised that they responded uh, to this deck. I thought it was a good fit for them. Um, but yeah, it really sums up my year too. You know, again, lots of adventure, some struggle, um, but in the end, sort of really big payoffs too, uh, for me personally. So, um, that, that is another reason why this, uh, kind of reminds me of the, the year 2023 as a whole. Um, lots of discovery, 
Um, lots of wondering if I could do things and then trying them and actually doing them. Um, and even things that were really hard, you know, just being able to come, come through that process and come out the other end has been very rewarding. So, um, yeah, that's, that's been great. Um, and I love this deck and I'm, I'm really jazzed to use it. And in fact, I had kind of decided to use it for my card of the year reading. And, um, then I noticed that the last prompt of this, of this, uh, list of prompts is pull a card for the new year. So I'm going to pull my card of the year, um, for 2024, uh, from this deck. I have pulled out the majors here and I have the 22 there. So um, I'm just gonna shuffle them here on camera and pull one for myself. And I'll do my you know, my own card of the year reading with, with the additional cards um, in a more fulsome way for myself in private, but I thought it'd just be fun to pick this card uh, with all of you. So um, we'll just uh, concentrate for a minute and ask what is Sarah's card for 2024? Um, I think I have described um, in previous years that I don't use any kind of numerology to calculate a card of the year. Um, I did, but um, it didn't seem to resonate with me very well. And I really do find that just doing a tarot reading, just like any other tarot reading, and randomly choosing a card is much more effective and clear and helpful. So let's see what my card of the year will be. <laughs> okay, that's really interesting. It's the Chariot again, um, which was a card I calculated uh, a couple of years ago. Actually, I had the Lovers and the Chariot, and then I had the Lovers. I drew the Lovers last year, so now I'm drawing the Chariot again. So um, this this makes me laugh. Um, it makes me feel humble, and um, I'm gonna you know do the rest of my reading. But um, so I know that we're. You know, uh, according to the math, 2 plus 2 plus 3 with 2023, that that was supposed to be our chariot year. And uh, and maybe going forward into 2024, people are thinking about that as a strength year. And if you want to think about that, that's, you know, if that's helpful for you, fine. Um, but uh, for me personally, and, and maybe for you too, there's an element of that chariot energy that's um, still moving forward. So, um, so we'll see. Um, interestingly, uh, we are buying a new car. Um, so maybe, maybe this, this card is in reference, uh, in part to that, to, to our new chariot that, um, that we're going to be getting. Um, I mentioned some saga with my, my current vehicle and, uh, a recall gone, gone awry. Um, and, but, uh, again, that's one of those situations that I thought was, was not really going to pan out well and it actually has turned out great. So I'm grateful to be able to buy a new EV uh, car at this time and you know get off of um, using so much gasoline and uh, and move forward in that way too in a very practical way. But obviously I think a car of the year is multi-dimensional too so it applies not to just one aspect of your life but but to multiple aspects. So um, thank you for joining me for this end of year tarot tag, and uh, I really appreciate it. I uh, want to thank again uh, Spirited Stardust and uh, Laura of Aquamarine 18 Tarot and Books for the inspiration to do this tag. I want to thank all of you for the discussions we've been having this year and the insights that you provided in comments. I've really learned a lot. Um, I will be also making a wrap up video for the book reading that I did in 2023, and I'll be um, briefly reviewing my top five books, tarot books that I read this year. So that'll be another video coming out very soon. And until then, I hope you're all well and um, that you're enjoying the holidays or at least decompressing from them if they were stressful. So uh, I hope to see you soon and be well. Talk to you later.